Welcome back, everybody, to the 50-Day Property Challenge. Again today, we have Matt Al from Metro FM and Jared Ricketts, singer, songwriter, and all-round fantastic artist with us. Um, they will talk today about this week, what they've learned in the 50-Day Property Challenge. Um, we've just gone through five days of learning, um, and they have already started their property journey. So you will remember last week, we, we interviewed them to understand what it is they were looking for, what they wanted to do, and how the EDPF Property Academy and private property could assist them in building their own property portfolios. So this week we learned quite a bit, but I will leave it up to the two, uh, Jared and Matt Al, to tell us all about what they learned this week. And then I'll ask them some questions um, about why they're doing this and how they're gonna do it, etc. So Jared, let's start with you. Give us an idea of what you learned. We spoke about a few things, your why, your how. We spoke about property as an investment opportunity. And we, we also spoke with Ben at Private Property. What did you learn this week that would be of value to you and help you in your journey with this 50-day property challenge? So for me, what I learned firstly is there's a big difference between investing in a property that you want to live in versus a property that's going to make financial sense for you in the future. You know, I think uh, one of the biggest things for me was also understanding that as someone who is renting out a property, there's a lot on your shoulders to take into consideration, um, whether it's the contract that you develop to the maintenance of the property and keeping that relationship with whoever is renting with you, because obviously you want people to rent for a long time. Um, that for me was the standout things that I learned. And I think for me, it was very important to understand why I want to build my property portfolio and how I want to go about doing so. And um, I'm still researching, still checking what's going to make sense for me. But um, the last few days have made it a lot clearer for me in understanding how I want to go about uh, doing everything. All right. Excellent. Thank you for that, Jared. Um, uh, Matt, Al, I'm going to ask you the same thing. Uh, what did you learn this week um, about why you want to do this, about property as an investment, um, and what you learned from Ben? Cool. Thank you so much, Nigel. Um, yeah, I think it all starts with understanding the why. I think that was the, the key core of the week, actually fully understanding and defining that for myself, why it is I actually want to do this, you know, being a creative in a space where money can be fickle, sometimes money comes in floods, but then how do you actually put that money into something that'll be for long-term, not just for my gain, but also for the next generation. I think also how, the how to go about this, because one thing for me that was a key standout for the week was the fact that a lot of people buy the property they live in as an investment. But I think the main thing I learned this week is how to, buy property to be cash flow positive from the minute you're making the purchase because then it's an investment. Otherwise, it still becomes a liability for many, many years. So that was a key standout for me. The other thing like Jared spoke about is really, really just how to manage the space because once you've got the property there's still a lot of work that goes into it you still need to maintain good relationships with your tenants you need to vet your tenants you need to make sure you're getting the right tenants you there's make sure your contracts are also right there's just so many um underlying or or like hidden aspects that you also need to be a part of the journey especially if you want to be a good landlord because in essence that's what you become when you're a property investor um, and then the other thing that stood out for me was, I guess, the private property app, which we learned about just the other day, how to actually navigate the app, how to use it, um, and how to, you know, be able to spot what's a good deal. Um, I, I think I noticed the fact that Standard Bank, for example, there's like repossessed properties that might be a better deal, but it's also important to make sure you actually go view the place because I've seen with some of the images, it's quite limited. So I think that's the one part that I'm really looking forward to next is from the app actually going into the spaces to see the property. But yeah, overall, it's, it's been a very fruitful week. Right, learned a lot. That's absolutely awesome. Um, I'm glad that you guys learned a lot from this week. Um, we, we don't often have time, a lot of time together. Uh, you guys are both busy. I'm also busy. But uh, this week was a very fruitful week, in my opinion. Um, so... Since you brought it up, uh, Matt, um, I think maybe let's talk about your why. 
Um, normally, when you get into anything, um, especially in business, and um, you, if you don't have that driving force, the thing that drives you to do what you do, then very often you'll fail because without a why, you have no reason to wake up in the morning. A very close friend of yeah. mine, TJ, the other day posted on Facebook and he said, uh, um, if, you, if, you're, if you don't have a reason to get up in the morning, you better find a, you know, something to do because at the end of the day, you need to have a motivation to wake up. So let's talk about your why. Uh, Matt, Al, tell us why it is you felt that property investment uh, was important for you to do, number one, and what is that thing that drives you and keeps you going? Thank you so much for the question, Nigel. I think my why is, is, is really simple. Um, it's the fact that in life, life is really uncertain, let's, let's be honest. And I think the lockdown was a big reality check for a lot of people um, in the sense that we live in a day and age where you really cannot live on one source of income anymore. You need to find ways of having multiple sources of income. You also need to find ways in which you put your money in things that will be fruitful, not only short term, but also for the long term. So short term wise, my why is for me, the benefit of me being able to one, have an asset that I know is going to be giving me income every single month. If it's cash flow positive, right? It'll be paying off the mortgage. It'll be paying off the levies. And hopefully we still got some change. Um, and then long term, it's obviously considering the fact that you know, we're trying to build generational wealth as well. Um, I think property has been a, a very, uh, it's, it's not a big discussion. And I'll be honest, especially a lot around a lot of um, black tables. Like we don't sit at the dinner table and we discuss property, you know, or even just out on the weekend with, we don't sit and discuss property. I want to get to a space where having property conversations is a normal thing. It's something that we do as people. And I think also because of the fact that I'm in the entertainment space, money is going to flood in, but that money can flow out as quickly as it floods in. So wanting to put it in something that I know for sure, long-term, I'll still be able to look back and say, my money is invested in something that is solid, that is secure. But obviously that all goes with getting the right education behind it. And if I must also make it a bit personal, one of the other reasons I'm so, so passionate about this is the fact that when I was in corporate, I did have the opportunity of buying two properties in that time. Still wasn't sure if it was the right way to go about it, but I think with the learning that I'm getting now, I will be able to apply that in the properties I currently have. But the reality check was the lockdown, where as an entertainer, I had no gigs, you know, like everything just shut down. And one of the things that kept me afloat was the fact that I had rental income. And I think as a, from a legacy perspective, if, if that is a knowledge I can impart or share with other people, ways in which you can also still maintain or, you know, still have cash flow coming in, I definitely believe that property is one of the best ways in which to do that. So that is my biggest why, that property conversations must become normal and it should be a place where I actually saw stats that I think in the country, I will verify this, that um, recently the most properties were bought by young black females, you know, so it's, it's slowly evolving, but I think we can get it to a point where it's more inclusive, you know, for us as a whole nation. So that's definitely part of my why. Absolutely amazing. Wow, Matt, oh, that, uh, that is a great story. And, uh, and I think we all resonate, uh, or your story resonates with all of us. Um, and you don't need to check those stats. I can confirm that it, it is definitely true. Um, so 100% spot on. Thank you very much for sharing with us. Uh, Jared, same question to you. Um, what is your why? Why are you doing this? For me, a big part of this why is the fact that people that come from the community that I come from, the Cape Flats, um, don't have a seat at the table when it comes to these conversations. Not because they don't want to, it's just 
ignorance of not doing enough research to to understand how property can work for you. Um, as Matt Al said, you know, for a lot of people, property has become a liability because there wasn't a lot of thinking that came into play when deciding on the kind of property that was invested in. And I think for a lot of people in my community, I would say people of color, um, it, it was just about investing in that one property that you're going to live in and that you leave behind if it's paid off for the next generation to inherit. And here is an opportunity where we can not only educate uh, people in South Africa, especially our youth, as we hear the stats are changing, which is great, but it's also um, an opportunity to, to, to yes, to educate yourself, but to, to leave that, that legacy that is empowered, you know, that it's not just about waiting on the inheritance, it's about having that buying power and adding to that and and allowing the finances to work for you in a way that you could set your children, their children's children up to be able to really um, be part of this changing landscape of property ownership. Um, it's a big thing for me and, and I'm excited that I'm learning, that I am gaining this knowledge and that we're sharing with the public. So thanks to um, EDPFA and private property, I think... Um, I think people don't realize how huge this is. You know, it's really a shift and a change for us as a people. And so it's exciting times and enlightenment. And I think we know better, we can do better. And so I'm really, really excited to be a part of this conversation that we are changing, changing the way property ownership works in our country. I agree with you fully there, uh, Jared. And uh, as you know, and we spoke about um, in your original interview, I also come from Athlone. Uh, Bridgetown to be specific yeah. and you're right we never spoke about these things around uh, our table uh, you know at, at dinner and so on um, and people need to be educated people need to understand and know that they actually can purchase property that they can be investors uh -huh. in property uh -huh. and that uh, waiting for that inheritance shouldn't be the be all and end all of property because I can tell you from experience once that inheritance comes especially if you're a big family uh, before you know it the money's gone yeah. Uh, because you, know, you can't all live in the one house. <laughs> so 100% correct there. We need to look at property as an investment vehicle and not just a place to live. Definitely. Um, I think you know, um, it's about thinking about retirement. I know as youth, we're thinking about the now, we're thinking about living the most now and doing the most now but I think it's it's all about setting yourself up because we, we we forget that we're going to be we're going to get older there's going to be a time where we have to retire and what that looks like is really defined by the choices you make now and so and so that's a big drive for me as well is to know that as a musician I won't always be the artist of choice as I get older and so at least I know that the money that I'm getting now I can put to good use and um, plant that seed so that I can reap the fruits at a later stage. Absolutely. Um, and on that note, uh, we'll take a, a bit of a break and play the Pied Piper. Um, so <laughs> we'd like to thank you guys for joining us uh, thus far for this first part of, of our wrap up for the week. Um, uh, keep uh, um, tuned and uh, we'll talk further about the why, the how, and also how to use the private property app in order for you to become a property investor as well. So thank you for joining us so far and we'll see you after the break. Welcome back everybody to the 50 day property challenge. This is the second part of our second uh, session with private property. Um, Come and join us every Friday at 8.30 uh, on the Private Property uh, Facebook page, as well as on YouTube, where you will learn about property investment within 50 days from our special guests, Jared Ricketts and Matt Owl from Metro FM. So guys, um, in the earlier session, we spoke a little bit about your why. Now I'd like to talk about the how. How are you actually going to do this? What is it that you learned this week about how to uh, go about purchasing your first property within 50 days. Um, and then we'll talk about the private property app a little bit. Since we started with Matt Owl first uh, before, uh, Jared, I will ask you to go and tell us all about how you believe you are going to start your property journey in these 50 days. For me, it's all about searching, 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 understanding what's out there and what's gonna work for me. And I think I have an idea 
but you know, it may change over time, uh, depending on price range and, and how I want the property to work for me. But um, I think a lot of research and definitely through learning that you have to go and actually see the property. Don't go just rely on pictures, you know, because they can be deceiving. Some people are trying to just sell properties quickly. So they, they, they put old pictures up and then when you get there, it's not what you thought it was. Um, and, and just yeah, research for me is key and understanding how I want to uh, invest. Um, but I, I'm just I'm just really open to anything right now because this is a new conversation for me, you know, um, and uh, sort of identifying all these things like the how and the why's have all been a new conversation for me to have. And so and so I'm enjoying the process of learning. But um, definitely that, that's the first point of call for me is just doing my research and understanding in terms of price range, uh, what kind of uh, property owner I want to be and how I want to rent it out and how I see this working for me into the future. Yeah, so um, one of the things that we spoke about uh, in your initial interview was about having a little bit of money put aside because you, uh, you're an artist and you, you don't always know when the gigs are going to come. Um, so you have to put some money aside and you start to prepare. So that's already you, you one up on most people because uh, most people don't prepare in that way. Most people just hope that they can fall into something great like an inheritance um, like we spoke about earlier and yeah. then hope that they'll be able to build from there. Definitely. And I think it's important for people to understand that it's been years of saving, you know, it wasn't just, okay, here's money. It's been a couple of years. I mean, probably a decade of me saying I eventually want to buy property. So I need to start putting money away, whether it was a 500 Rand, whether it was a thousand Rand, whether it was even a 200 Rand, just putting it aside and knowing that over time, it's going to become this deposit that you can use. And I think for me, that was the important thing I'm also learning is that when you've got a, a, a great deposit, it solidifies the deal quicker. And um, it just sets you in good stead with, with actually just acquiring the property faster. So, so that was also a big lesson for me. And I'm excited that I did that. And I, uh, I urge everybody out there to, mm -hmm. to start, you know, and give yourself a time frame and understand X amount of money from your salary, put it away yeah. because it might sound like a bit of money, but at the end of the day, in five years time or in two years time, or in fact, next year, there's a bit of a deposit that you can put down. Fantastic. Yeah. Look, I mean, at the end of the day, also it's a, uh, you know, property, as we always uh, say, is a long-term investment. It's not a, a yeah. rich, quick scheme. So you yeah. need to have that mindset that things are going to take time. So like building yeah. up a deposit. Um, you know, for some of us, we want to do it quicker. So we get into things like, um, you know, being able to do sourcing deals. And uh, basically what that means, and we'll speak about this later in the 50 days, if you, if you don't have your own money, then you go out to source deals and you unsell those deals to potential investors and you make a commission on being able to source and package that deal. And in so doing, you'll be able to build up some uh, deposit and then eventually be able to purchase your own property. What you've done over an entire decade, that is so impressive, the patience it must have taken to not use that money over 10 years when emergencies but, came up. It's because very impressive. As Yes, I mean, as in doubling, you said before, I mean, when the pandemic hit, it was quite a, a struggle for a lot of us artists. And so you look at that pot and you kind of go, maybe I can use it now. Maybe I should just not do this. But it's, 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 it's something to be said about just, just saying focus on that goal, you know, and understanding that it's not about now. It's not about satisfying whatever need it is now. It's about thinking about when I'm 60, when I'm 70, you know, knowing that I've, I've set this, 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 this portfolio out for myself that I can retire comfortably, you know, that that's exciting to me. And I, as I said before, I urge everybody to think that way too. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Doubling, uh, Matt Al, tell us about your, what are you, you've already purchased two properties and we spoke about that again in your interview. Um, so you really at the stage where you want to build on your portfolio and not start something new. Um, so tell us how you are going to go about, building onto your existing portfolio? Um, okay, so I think it starts with first setting a realistic price range. Um, I think that's also the key starting point of this is the amount that I'm looking for. I think the how is also 
what type what what type of property um, is first also understanding that do do I want to rent out to maybe potential in a student area in a you know is it like holiday res residential it's, it's also just being able to define that for yourself like actually how am I really really thinking about this so first answering those questions for yourself I think also something else that I learned in the past week was Jared was very fortunate, yes, to, um, you know, have saved up money for so long. But the truth of the matter and the reality of a lot of South Africans is not everybody has that money to, um, you know, had been saving for 10 years. So I think some of the how I also took from the past week is, which I know we're still going to touch on further, is how do I actually secure funding for property investment with someone else's money? You know, not necessarily my own. Um, number two, it's, what is some of the admin and the documents that I personally in my life need to have in place? I know we touched on certain documents, like, uh, like if you're working, if you're fully employed, you're going to need your pay slips. You're going to need a good credit score. Like those are also long-term things you need to plan for. Cause you might be sitting in a position where right now your credit score is not doing great, maybe because of the pandemic. Now that's the plan you need to set out for yourself that, okay, over the next three months, I'm getting back to, you know, solidifying my credit score so that I'm in good standing for creditors to potentially want to allow me to, you know, get money if I'm using the financial institution route. Um, I think the other how uh, that really stuck out for me was, like Jared mentioned, it's not just about looking at pictures. It's me also physically being active, setting out a day in my calendar to say, okay, um, I've viewed X amount of properties, I've contacted so many agents, but I need to go see them. I need to be sure that what I'm seeing on the pictures is what's really happening because there's a lot of things pictures won't tell you. Like you need to go press that light switch to check if all the lights are working. You don't know if the geezers work. You don't know if the stove is working. And those are costs that you might find yourself being trapped in having bought this property because you literally just went on pictures. Um, so I think those are some of the, the, the main hows for me. Yeah, just setting out a clear price range for myself so I know what I'm doing. Defining what type of property investment I want to go for. For me, I'm definitely looking at like maybe student accommodation. Um, the area of focus, um, yo, South Africa is large, but where? Where do I actually want to invest? You know, that's also important. And familiarizing yourself with the area in which you want to invest in. It doesn't help that I'm in Pretoria or Johannesburg, but I'm buying a property in Durban. <laughs> How do I even, you know, so it's also just making sure that I'm very well, like versed in the understanding of that area, especially if it's going to be a first time investment. So for me, because I'm building, um, I'm trying to build this portfolio, it's first rectifying any mistakes that I made in buying the first two, make sure that I'm managing them correctly, um, which I have been, but now, you know, we just tightening the screws a little bit more um, and then yeah I guess going forward making sure that I as a landlord know how to because currently I've been allowing someone else to manage for me but I think with one of the classes I realized that actually I can save a bit of money if I manage it myself but I didn't know how to so a lot of that information also helped me yeah so I think yeah that's a lot of my how yeah wow okay so in fact those few things that we spoke about, we really just spoke about them briefly um, mm. during this week. And as the weeks go by, we're going to talk more in depth about things like doing a due diligence on your property and understanding all those things you just said now about the electrical wiring, the plumbing, the roof, um, et cetera, et cetera. How often have we not gotten ourselves into situations exactly as you described, where you, you buy the house, you move in, and then you find out that the plugs don't work because the electrical <laughs> compliance certificate you received was actually <laughs> done by some friend of a friend uh, of the estate agent or the, or the owner. And actually, uh, the compliance certificate is meaningless. So you have to do your own yeah. due diligence. And we'll talk about all of those things. We'll talk about feasibility studies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so I think that's enough uh, for now, except for the fact that we also spoke about the private property app and how to use the app 
to research property. So Jared, um, what did you learn from that? And, and Matt Al, um, I, I believe there was a property that you were quite interested in. Uh, I think it was a repossessed property um, that you saw that possibly we could do as a deal together. Um, so Jared, uh, yes. your thoughts of the private property app? I think it's really cool. I think the, the interface is quite user friendly. For me, it was quite uh, interesting to see that you could really define that search you know, to the kind of uh, property, whether it's a flat or a house, to how many rooms, how many bathrooms. And um, it's quite exciting because um, you really get a scope of the entire country of what's available just by typing in the name. And for me, it really opened my mind up to going, oh, I'm not just limited to Cape Town. I can actually um, now think about, is it interprovincial you know am i going to go to joburg and check out a property am i going to invest in something in durban and um i love it because obviously all the information is there on the property the agent's information is there and so with the easy click of a button i was connecting with various agents to to try and solidify some um some viewings um very exciting and so i i i, I really enjoyed the experience Fantastic. Uh, Doubling, um, uh, tell us about that uh, that uh, deal that was on the private property app that, we, that we're looking at. Yes, so um, there was a property there. It was definitely repossessed because it was by Standard Bank, number one. But also what made it sound like such a gem, which when I view it, we'll see if it really is a gem, um, is the fact that Am I still? Yeah, it's the fact that um, the price, right? I think it was a three bedroom, right? Um, it was a three bedroom, square meters, quite spacious. Um, but the asking price for it was 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 quite competitive. Like, because the, the the private property app, nice thing about it is that you actually get to see if you like like Jerry said, you get to zone in on an area. So if I'm looking at Pretoria and I zone in maybe Arcadia or I zone in Hatfield, I also get to see the average price range of properties within that area for a one bedroom or two bedroom or three bedroom, just so that you know realistically what is the going rate. So the interesting thing about this one was the fact that it was a three bedroom, but it was almost priced like a one bedroom deal, you know? Yeah. So I think it was like 300,000 like, or something. Eh? Yes, yeah. I was like 300,000 <laughs> I mean, for yeah. a three bedroom apartment. <laughs> Yeah. Two parking bays, bathroom, kitchen. So, yeah, I guess it's also just understanding why is the bank, why is it that little? Is the bank just trying to recover the money outstanding yeah. or is there something wrong? I need to go check it out. Yeah. <laughs> but Again, it sounds like a to, really good yeah. deal. Back to your due diligence yeah, requirement. Yeah. So, yes. guys, thank you very much for this week. It's been an exciting week of learning. Um, and we thank everybody that was involved in, uh, in teaching us about uh, our why and our how and about the app itself um, and uh, guys um, out there the, the public that's watching us and listening to uh, this uh, po uh, vlog podcast whatever they call it nowadays um, thank you for joining us thank you for allowing us into your homes um, and for allowing us to um, not just educate uh, Matt L and Jared but also you the public about property and how you too can invest in property within a 50 day period. So keep following us, keep watching us, keep watching us on uh, YouTube, keep watching us on our website, uh, edpfpropertyacademy.com um, and uh, search, search for us on uh, YouTube and you'll be able to find us there, uh, subscribe to our channel and every day we will post what we have done on that particular day and you will be able to follow this journey with the EDPF Property Academy private property and our two special guests, Jared Ricketts and Matt Al, as they uh, have started their journey towards building their own property portfolio. And we hope that you also will be able to do that. So guys, thank you very much for joining us. Join us again on Monday as we uh, for, uh, continue this journey of, of the 50-day property challenge. Oh, right.